Hello and welcome along to another episode of Best With Tech. This is part one of the ANET A8 rebuild series where I am rebuilding into a Prusa i3 Mark II S. Um, this is part one where we're looking at the Y-axis assembly. As you can see, we've got to, um, the base frame structure put together already. Now, there are so many build videos out there online, some of them insanely brilliant, that it's absolutely pointless redoing one here. All I'm going to do is start showing the issues we have when we start integrating the ANET parts. Now, before we go any further, I really need to talk about some insanely bad rookie errors I made to begin with. If you remember back to my introduction um, piece, I said how I'd cut all the pieces down to um, reflect the sizes in the Prusa build manual. So I shortened all of the smooth rods and I got myself some new 10mm um, threaded rod for the main frame and cut all of the existing 8mm parts in half to use on these end pieces. What I forgot to realise of course was that the bolts I were using were these that I could get from the local hardware store which meant they were actually too thick and by the time you add one of these onto each end the threaded rod wasn't long enough so I had to go back out and buy some more rod and cut the new ones down to size making it allowing the oversize to get the thicker bolts on then started putting the thing together and then found out that I didn't have enough 8mm bolts to complete the job I could have sworn I'd counted these in advance but you don't have enough so it was back down to the hardware store only to find they didn't have any in stock. Uh, at this point I was so frustrated with myself I was actually quite annoyed with my stupidity I just walked away and left it for a day. Now I then went online looking to see what I could get hold of in the way of bolts and found this seller on eBay and it was actually cheaper to get a complete set of the half size thinner bolts that they actually use on the original frame and I got an entire set of black um, 10 millimeters and the 8 millimeter ones for less money than it would have cost to go to my local hardware store and buy the remaining <laughs> 8mm bolts which is insane and just shows how in insanely expensive they are they just come in packs of 5 like this at a time I can't remember how many pounds it is per 5 crazy so anyway, so that's what I ended up doing was ordering some new bolts so I had to then wait for these to get delivered and here we are, this is where we get to so, a lesson learned, do your preparation I just rushed in, assumed I had what I needed to and this is where we get to. Complete waste of a few days of time. But anyway, that's behind and we move on. This actually went together really easy, but as we can see, <laughs> there's only two pieces I'm now using, which were from the A8, which are the original smooth rods I've cut down to size. Everything else is now new. Ah oh dear, we live and learn. So there we go. Okay, so here we are. The base frame is now finished and we're about to start on the Y carriage itself. Now the kit I got is actually for the Mark II S and it comes with all of these holes pre-drilled to take the, the new U-bolts so they just slot in fine. If you happen to have an older one which is obviously designed for the Mark II or earlier these will not be big enough and you're going to have to drill them out if you want to use the U-bolts. You don't have to use the U-bolts, you can go ahead and use, do it the old way using the tie wraps. I wanted to do it with the U-bolts. Now obviously you can as well, you just need to drill these out with a slightly larger 3.2 would probably do the job, millimetre drill bit. Um, the other thing to look at of course is with this being a um, clone part, we don't have the dimple in the corner to tell you which side is the right way up. Now, so we have to go back in time a while now to some of the early, early Prusa builds with the um, squashed frog Y carriage. They used to come with a, a spacer part which you could just line up here and depending on where the holes are aligned will tell you which is face up. So we can do a similar way yourselves if you want to determine which way is up. Is if you put the, put, put the plate down with the two bearings away from you and measure the width between that edge and that hole. The thicker side is the one we're going to want. So this one, 13.9. I flip this one over and measure it on the other side. I think there's about one millimetre difference. Yeah. 12.9 we want the thicker side so if you make sure it's orientated with the two bearings away from you 
and the thickest gap there between the threaded hole and the edge there. This is the side we'll have the dimple up and you can see I've already scratched this, I've just scratched some paint off to remind me. So it's just worth doing before you go any further if you're working on a clone build so that you're not messing around and gambling with a 50-50 chance that you've got the wrong side and then but just before you go to put the bed on and find it doesn't line up you've got to take it all apart again. So that's all I'd mention here just to get this one ready. So next step is start putting things together. Okay so I'm getting ready to install the Y carriage but before I do let's talk about the parts that I've installed first. Um, as you can see on the left we've got the Y idler bearings installed now these are just the two half bearings that are standard A-net, just fixed together with a couple of washers either side. It's not quite the same size as the bearing that comes with the Prusa kit, but it should do the job. It seems to fit in there quite nicely, quite fiddly with the two halves, but anyway, it goes in. Next we have the Y-axis end stop. Now again, this is the standard part from the A-net kit, and by a stroke of luck, dimensionally, this is identical to the Prusa part, so it just screws straight in. In fact, the fit is that good. I don't think I'm going to need to be able to use this spring. I may well be able to take it off. So I will leave it for now, but once I finish this carriage, I might be able to get rid of it. Then we've got the motor. That's just the standard A-net motor. Obviously, can't wire it in exactly the same as the, as the, the instructions because the cables come out a different place, but that's the lot. Those are the parts installed on the wide carriage base. So, moving on. So here we are then, the end of part one, and the y-axis is complete. The only really thing that we've used to A-net part-wise is the um, bearings that were on the old um, carriage, and I've reused the existing um, belt from the A-net. Now, I know this is quite a stiff plasticky belt, but it's very strong. When I was trimming it down to size, this has got four steel um, cores going through it, so it's not going to stretch any. So yes. Um, yeah, Y axis complete. Next part will be the X carriage. So, um, if you want to keep tabs on this project and follow the parts as I go through the build, please um, subscribe and click on the bell so you'll be notified when the next part comes out. Likewise, um, those interested in these bolts, I'll include links in below as well to show the eBay seller I got the half size um, bolts and washers from. Other than that, um, Everything went very smoothly. I was actually very surprised and glad how the um, micro switches fitted perfectly. No changes at all, no drilling, just screwed straight down. So, yep, looking forward to the rest. So, I shall see you for the next part. Goodbye.